What is going on, Kane Sport? It's Ubi Charles here for another installment of Inside the Lines. Today, we're switching things up a little bit as I'll be joined by Edward Coleman, who is the father of 2026 Miami commit Darion Coleman, as well as his quarterback trainer, Bray Balin Trujillo. So without further ado, let's bring those two guys on the show. What's going on, fellas? Appreciate you guys joining me today. How you doing? Appreciate you having us. Of course, of course. Uh, like I said in the intro, here to talk about DC and Miami's 2026 commit. Balin, you've been there, you know, since the beginning with him. Obviously, Mr. Coleman, his dad, you know, helped him get to the point he is today. Balin, I want to start with you. You know, been training dairy off since he was about 10, 11 years old. What were your first impressions when you saw him and things like that? Yeah, I mean, I'll never forget the first time I ever saw him was at a FBU All-American camp uh, here in Orlando, Florida. And uh, he's about 10 years old. And he had come for a tryout for one of the teams there. And, uh, and the first pass he ever threw to me was actually – it was so impressive. I, I kind of got freaked out a little bit because I'm like, hold on, there's no way a kid at, at this age – because there was other kids there that were throwing in his age group, and it wasn't even close to what that looked like. So when I caught the ball, I was first amazed, but second, the grip of the ball felt a little weird because it was a rubber football. And so I'm like, hold on, because if anybody knows about me and, and my style, I don't, I don't ever like when kids throw composite balls. It's all about leather because that's more realistic and a, and a different feel than actual rubber. And so – when I caught the ball, I looked at him, and I'm like, okay, this kid's elite. But then I realized it wasn't a leather ball, so I chucked it. And I said, go get it. And he, like, looked at me like, what's this dude doing? Like, what do you mean? Because he threw a good pass. I said, just go get it. So he ran and got it, and he could tell he was kind of pissed off at me. He came back, skipped the kids, went right back in line, went again, threw it as hard as he could at me. And I grabbed it, and I said, I threw it again to the side. I said, go get it. He's like, what are you do why, why are you doing this for? I said, next time you see me, you better have a leather ball. So I kind of got in his head a little bit. Uh, but, I mean, other than that, I mean, it was flawless, to be honest with you. I kind of got freaked out again. And um, from that moment, I know Mr. Coleman was there, and I know he was probably like, what's this guy, this knucklehead doing? But it, it, he kind of liked it. So he approached me after the camp with Darion and was like, hey, man, I've never seen a coach talk to my son like that other than me. And I'm like, yes, sir, I, I, you, know, I don't, you know, I don't care. I don't baby these kids. Like, I'm not going to – you're going to see who I am on the field. Like, I'm not going to genuinely try to be all nice and stuff when I – when I try to make a point. And so he loved that. He was like, look, man, I got to get your contact. You know, I'm the only one that's trained my son and I want to see maybe what you can do with him. And so we'll, we'll make that commitment. And that's what he did. I mean, it was like, I'm not going to lie for a span of about two and a half years, it was three or four times a week. And they live in Polk County, which is not too far. I mean, it was kind of far from where my, I'm at. And so they were dra driving like an hour and a half to come see me three times a week. And no matter where I was, whether I was doing a camp down South, a camp up North, they were there. They were bought in. They loved the process. They loved, again, how hard I was on his son because I'm kind of a perfectionist, even though I know no one's perfect. And so he just bought into the process, and I got him with all my elite kids. So every time I had elite training with college kids or pro kids, Darian would be there for that specific purpose to keep pushing him because I saw him doing things that at his age group, there was no – it wasn't even come, come close to it. It was There was no comparison with anybody. That I was training. I trained a lot of kids, and at that age group, it was like him and then everybody else. It was like a big separation. And so, anytime I had any type of commercial interview, uh, big you know training, college guys, Darion Coleman had to be there. And then I got him connected with DeAndre Francois, which was a, a quarterback that he was looking up to at the time, and also Jameis Winston. Um, and so he actually, by God's grace, was at one of my trainings one day. It's just a random Saturday. Jameis was literally on the field next to me throwing and Darion was there. And so he got to meet Jameis in person at, at my training, which is a really cool uh, moment that I won't forget uh, for him specifically. But man, it was just, it's something special to see. And, you know, I train a lot of kids, like I mentioned, but Darion was just on a whole different level, especially throwing the football. And I give that credit to his dad because he first had to develop him before I even saw him. And so he had that gift and God blessed him with the, the ability to just rip it. And so I've been blessed enough to kind of tweak his game a little bit in the development stages and his footwork and, and how he was able to see the field and, and slow the progressions down. And now he's with Elijah Williams, who was my head coach in high school at Jones. And he's also taking his game from a mental standpoint to another level to where he's now committed to Miami. And so it's like a dream come true for me as a Canes fan growing up. Uh, he's my first ever official Kane, which I've told him from day one that we really started training, that I was making him and molding him into becoming a Miami Hurricane quarterback. Uh, but a short little story, when he was about 12, we were in Lake City for a camp. We went to a Ross after the camp was over because, you know, we hang out. I'm like family. like They're like family to me. Like they, they come to Orlando, to Bahama Breeze. I'm going to come up and, and, and meet them for lunch. Or like I said, we just hang out after camps. And so one day we went to Bahama Breeze uh, after – no, it was actually uh, Longhorns up in Lake City. And afterwards we went to a, uh, a Ross, and we were just walking around, killing time. 
and uh, there was Oklahoma hat on the rack. And at that time, Oklahoma was was pretty big and uh, a couple Heisman Trophy winners back to back to back. And so, you know, I showed him the hat and he's like, coach, I'm going to play here. I'm like, OK. So I bought him the hat. I literally bought him the hat at Ross. And I said, look, man, you continue to do this path. You're not only going to be able to play here, you're going to win a Heisman Trophy and be in the NFL. This is really what you want to do. And so that was kind of the inside joke, which is kind of hilarious because now you you fast forward to where he is now as junior year in high school. It was between Miami and Oklahoma. Those were his final two, and Oklahoma really loved him. Coach Seth Luttrell, one of my one of my guys, was betting his whole career on this kid. I mean, he loved him, and he he saw multiple of my top guys and was like, "That's the one right there. That's the one that I want." And he was talking about Darion Coleman, and so. It looked to be that way, but Shannon Dawson did his magic, and now here we are as a Miami Hurricane commit, and that's ultimately where I want him to be at. So here we are. Yeah, kind of a full, full circle moment. I remember when you first kind of – I spoke with you, you t- kind of told me that story, and I was, like, uh, amazed about it. And you know, seeing, seeing that happen, that is pretty awesome, especially reporting side, hearing, you know, a kid from a very young age like a program, you know, eventually commit to that dream school. But, Mr. Coleman, I want to ask you, obviously, you know, you played ball in your day, and, you know, from a father's perspective, kind of just handing off D.C. to Balin and helping him out throughout that process is kind of what's been that experience like, you know, up to this point in that journey. Uh, it, it was a it was a blessing. Uh, like Balin said, when he first met him, he, he didn't go. He, he wasn't soft on him. And see, his training from four, I think that was about nine and a half. I was never soft on him. And that one meeting with Balin when he took the ball and threw it. And it was it was my fault because I knew I didn't know nothing about the composite ball or the leather ball. So Darion felt like Balin was uh, embarrassing him. And, you know, after I got Balin number and he started working with Balin, he fell in love with him because he was like that at every training session. He still is. And that's another thing leading in, like Balin said, Elijah Williams. That's why I, I like and respect Williams because he don't he don't play with Darion. So Darion always been an athlete. And so I just couldn't put no anybody over him. Those training sessions with me, even at the young age, some of them got intense. And you can ask Balin. Sometimes, you know, he's he's when he trains, you know, he laugh, he he happy go lucky. And then sometimes he like really into it. And you really you gotta get in his chest. And so when the meeting of Balin, you know, it was a blessing. With you, I was you said you kind of trained him from four to nine, really. Just when did you realize, you know, you know, my son is different from other kids? Obviously, a lot of people you know, say, hey, my son's this, my son's that. When did you truly say, hey, Darion is different from a lot of other kids around his age? Between uh, between four and five years old. He, he, he has an older brother named Darius. And uh, I think Darius used to train a lot. I used to train him a lot. Darius is like four years older than him. And so he would get in there, and I could see where – he wasn't just out there having fun as a little brother. He was competing. And when I found out he can really throw, it wasn't a football. It was throwing a baseball. But he never liked it a sport. I had him in T-ball one year, and, and he could just throw. And so we started, uh, when we would go out and I trained his brother Darius, he played DB. He didn't play quarterback. Darion could do everything with him. And then we, I started just throwing the ball around with him. It was the zip he had on the ball and the release he had at that young age. And I, you know, we just started, I started working him a lot, a lot more with QB. And then he, Darion has this passion of winning, not just with, with everything. He competed with the kids in the neighborhood. He competed with his brother all the time. He just had this, this, this unbelievable, unbelievable drive and winning. He's always been that way. He's still that way. And that's why I was always careful about who I turned him over to even high school program, he had to be with a strong coach, not just no coach that is all about winning. And see, with Coach Will, Will is going to hold him and anybody else on that team accountable. And and that's what I respect. You know, you got some coaches out here in high school, they just want to win. Kid can do anything. Coach never hold them accountable. And then those same kids catch up with themselves later on down the line. I didn't want that for him. Baylor, I kind of want to get back to you with this. Obviously, DJ uh, DC is off to a very, very good start to a junior. 6-0, over 1,400 passing yards, 13 touchdowns. For you, you've seen him throughout his whole high school career. What do you think is the biggest difference for DC this year off to this really big start in his junior year? I just think he sees the game more. And actually, I think he's up to 14 touchdowns. So he's he's really putting a, putting a number up there. And uh, 
And like I said, there's there was one game he didn't even throw a touchdown. They were beating the team so bad and running the ball so much is like he didn't really have to do much. And so, you know, it could it could get ugly. I mean, he's on tra- track to make about 30 touchdowns this year, which I'm you know that was always my goal for him, and that's only in 10 games. Obviously, we have playoffs and hopefully a state championship. So I'm looking for a massive year from him. Um, but I just see seeing his development of seeing the field and going through his progressions. Um, he always had this knack of wanting to stay in the pocket. That's just natural for him, uh, which a lot of people at his size wouldn't want to do. And he's considered labeled a dual threat. He's not even that he's a quarterback who's very athletic. So he can deceive you with his legs and he's very explosive with the ball in his hand, but he wants to stay in the pocket. So understanding his progressions, going through his progressions inside the pocket, which he's already comfortable in, that's where his game's taken to the next level. And he's only thrown two interceptions and both of them were kind of like Hail Mary plays before halftime. So he's, He's taking care of the football. He's not turning it over. He's very he's very decisive in where he wants to throw the football. He's very accurate. And the deep ball is just gorgeous to watch. And so he's it's just fun to see when it all comes together and what it looks like. And, again, he still has two years before he even steps on the campus at the University of Miami. So what does that look like when he's bigger, faster, stronger, and smarter? I mean, it's unbelievable what can be placed on this kid. And right now we have him uh, with a speed and agility and strength trainer. Uh, and Tony Ponton, who's working heavily with him Mondays and Wednesdays to stay strong in the weight room and build the, the physique in the lower body. So hopefully putting on some good weight as well. Um, and again, that's just all preparing for a bigger purpose and a bigger plan. And I'm glad that you guys get to see it. The fans get to see it uh, when we, you know, when we post those videos out on Twitter and stuff week in, week out and what he's doing on the field. And so you guys are just seeing a product of all the hard work that he's putting in weekly. And like I said, going through his progressions, taking care of the football and, and lighting it up. Hopefully, going uh, making Jones have their first ever undefeated season under Coach Elijah Williams, which they've always gone nine and one, eight and two. This is looking to be a special year, and it's all because of what Darion's doing on the field and and what he's doing with his game. Mr. Coleman, question for you: uh, DC committed to Miami during the summer. Mike Balin said Oklahoma, Miami came down to that final stretch. For you as a father, why do you feel comfortable, you know, sending DC to Miami with that coaching staff under Mario Cristobal, Shannon Dawson? Just your overall thoughts about that program. Um. I had, a, I had the opportunity to meet um, Coach Latrell also in Oklahoma. Him and Dawson, and uh, I was telling Dawson the other day, it, it's like they're the same person. Um, just with speaking with Dawson, Dawson is like a man's man to me. And I feel like, you know, my, he will take care of my son. And it's just the, the the feeling that I got with talking with Dawson. It's bigger than football. It's always It always has been, you know. I think that transition from going from Coach Will to Coach Dawson and, and Cristobal is going to be a smooth transition for Darion. And plus, you know, I just sit back. Like right now, I'm just – I'm not telling my son what to do and where he should go. You know, I'm listening to him, and and I'll tell you right now, he loving Dawson. So that's it's, that's all this deals for me, man. And then, Balin, a uh, question for you. Obviously, you know, you've been around a ton of college programs. We've talked to a ton of, you know, different coordinators, quarterback coaches, head coaches, things like that. Why do you think that fit between D.C. and Dawson, you know, is going to pan out and work in the future for those guys? Yeah, I'm all about relationships. And if you notice, a lot of the top elite kids that I train, they all have committed to places where I have really good relationships with. And so Shannon Dawson, from day one that he took the job at Miami, uh, reached out to me and was like, hey, man, I've heard your name and, you know, your, your quarterback trainer, Orlando, I just want to see your top guys. And so send me a list of them. And Darion was at the top of the 26 list when I did send them the names. And of course he was recruiting some of my other guys. He offered Noah, Brady and Darion love those guys. So through the, the recruiting process, uh, I got to really build that relationship with Dawson and just understanding his offense and what he wants to do. Uh, you know, in my head, I'm thinking, Oh my goodness, this is like the perfect fit for Darion because of what you're seeing with Cameron Ward. That was always what he envisioned his office looked like. Now, obviously he's, had other quarterbacks at Miami, most notably last year, right, that that he had to kind of force into his offense. And then he got the home run hit with Cameron Ward, and now we're really seeing it. And now right behind Cameron Ward, you got Darion Coleman, who I think is going to be that special, if not even more special, when he gets to Miami in two years, and then understanding Coach Doss's offense, which is a lot similar to what they do at Jones. And so when you add those two together – you know, you have a quarterback that's a trigger man that wants to throw the ball, which that's what Dawson loves, who can also hurt you with your legs like Cameron Ward can. You mix that two together with Darion Coleman. It's like you're going to see that for the next four years when he gets there. And so if you're if you're a Miami fan, you better get excited because this thing is going to keep popping. And Dawson, just like I said, he's just he's just that guy. You know, you talk to a lot of guys in the in the quarterback room. He's an alpha. There is nobody bigger than Dawson in that room. And, you know, Cameron Ward has a lot of hype right now. He's up for the Heisman, putting up crazy numbers. 
a lot of that ain't, ain't happening without Dawson. And so uh, with that being said, it's just the perfect fit for Darion. And Darion needs someone who's going to be hard on him. And I think like Coach Coleman or Mr. Coleman said, you know, he's a man's man. He, he's, he's, he's a dirty, go get it, hard nose, ain't, don't want no soft kid in that room. And so he will weed you out. And, and, and the way he shows you weed you out, you won't be on the field. And so with saying all that, you know, this is just like the perfect opportunity for Darion to really be that guy under a guy who knows what he's doing, wants to throw the football, and wants to win a lot of football games. And like Mr. Coleman said, Darion hates losing. He makes one bad throw in training. He's, he's, he's even competing with himself with everything he does. And so, you know, he'll throw a great pass. I'll make a comment, man, great ball. He'll be like, no, it's a terrible ball. I need to do it again. And so when you have a true competitor like that, man, I, it just juices me up because, again, I'm not shy to say it, and I and I have a lot of relationships, a lot of coaches. I'm a Miami Hurricanes fan. You take me out of the training business, I'm rooting for Miami Hurricanes every single Saturday. And so knowing what Miami is going to get in the next year and a half excites me because I'm a fan, and I, all I want Miami to do is win, and they've got probably the next Heisman Trophy winner if Cameron wins it this year coming in the next year and a half. And so I know Dawson loves it. He, he texts me every single week about Darion. He calls me. He We're at games together. He's texting me in the middle of games, wants to know exactly what Darion's doing. You know, we're talking Saturdays. Jones has played a couple Saturday games. They're playing that night, and he's texting me about Darion and what he's doing. So that automatically tells you the impact that Darion has on what he's seeing on the field and how excited he is for what, what Darion's going to do when he gets there in a couple of years. So uh, I think us saying the next Cameron War is an, is an understatement because – Darion Coleman's about to make a name for himself when he gets to Miami, and I'm excited for it. That's all I'm saying. Baylin, you've always, you know, never shied away saying Darion, you know, is the best arm talent you've ever coached, ever worked with. Just kind of talk about that and elaborate for people. Obviously, you know, it's easy to say that. People probably say that and say, oh, you know, what is he talking about? Just elaborate on that. What do you mean he's the best arm talent you've ever coached? Yeah, and I, I want Mr. Coleman to also elaborate on this, too, about, you know, what he saw in that gift. But um, I say that because when you're 165 pounds, and you're able to, on one foot, throw 72 yards, I, I, you can't explain that other than God. Like, that, that is just God-given. There's no other explanation. I mean, I'm having trainings with Noah Grubbs, who's 6'4", 200 pounds, Brady Hart, who's 6'4", 200 pounds, and those guys are going throw for throw. And at the end of the training in one session, I said, go ahead, rip it as far as you can, and guess who came out on top? So it's like, how how does this kid at six foot six foot one, 165 pounds, throwing 70 yards and competing with these guys? That's arm talent. That's elite arm talent. That's something that is is again, you could train as much as you want to, to throw farther or be more accurate, whatever. That's great. But the 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 ability to naturally use your entire body in a throw with no hitch in your throw, effortless mechanics. That is God given, and that's when I say, you know, he's the most elite arm talent I've ever trained, and I can, I will take that to the grave. You know, I've seen DeAndre Francois throw a football, one of the prettiest balls I've ever seen. You know, there's so many elite talents that I've seen in person, including the guys that I train, and nothing compares to when, when Darion Coleman throws a football. Nothing. It's Coleman. Kind of want to get your thoughts, you know, on that here and here in Balin. Kind of say that as well. I, I agree with Balin. Um... It, it was always I, – I felt like it was God-given talent that he got. And But watching him over the years, I always said he was going to be the most dangerous when he realized how good he is. Even at a young age, he – I mean, he could throw a football, but it was his passion for winning. And and it's how he plays the game. Like now when I watch him, I can – every throw – I can see him when he dropped back. I pretty much I know where he's gonna go. All the years of training and camps and training sessions, and I, I just have a feel for him. I know when he's likes when he goes back there, but when he's bouncing, it's like I feel like he's unstoppable. He always been that kid, and now he's he's coming in. The game is slower for him, and I think that had a lot to do with playing him early in the eighth grade on varsity. It's like he's just standing there. You know, some people in the stands they be like, I throw the ball. But he he's he go through his progression so fast in his head to everything is catching up with the gift of the arm. The way he see the defense is how fast he processes and then he released that ball. So I mean I agree with Balin. It's always been a God given talent. That's what I was hearing. My last question for you, Mr. Coleman, is just wrap it all up kind of. Obviously, you know, you've been the coach, you know, you've helped him out in that aspect, but just kind of taking the coach's cap off. As a father, how special and awesome is it to see your son kind of go from a kid that you you knew had the talent at four or five to now the country's recognizing that talent as well? Yeah, it's 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 a 
uh, for me, you know, I'm I'm happy for him. Not just what he's doing on the football field. It's how he he went through all the adversity that we had to face, and and he can shake that off. I mean, he he can just shake it off and get out there on that field, and, and you know do what he loves doing, without letting him bother him or getting in any trouble or stuff like that. I'm more impressed with that. Now I do love watching him play, because every every time I watch him play, that's still that's me seeing my little baby that I started training at four years old, and now he's growing into a young man. And um, that's why it was very important for me to put the right people around him, Baylin, you know, Coach Will, especially Coach Will. I mean, he's doing a lot for Darion. He, uh, I'm for his uh, helping him become that young man. He's, Will's like an extension of me. And then he got Baylin like a big brother. You know, if he, it's some things he go through he don't want to talk to me about, he can reach out and talk to those, those two men. So I'm loving the process. That's awesome. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Balin, I really do appreciate you coming on. Mr. Coleman, I appreciate you coming on. Balin, uh, where, where can they find you on social media? All that good stuff for the fans out there. Yeah, you guys can find me on social media at, at my name. I mean, that's posted right here uh, at Balin Trujillo on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, there's also my quarterback training page on Instagram at B True QB Training with no E. So it's B T R U QB Training. Uh, I post a lot of my stuff, my content, and what these kids are doing on a weekly basis on that Instagram page, as well as my Twitter page, my personal page on Instagram. That's just more for me and my family and my college visits that I do with these kids. And so Darren's been on a lot of that recently. Um, but yeah, that's where you can find my social. Also, I have a website, www.baylintrahio.com, where you can see my training schedule, my camp schedule, where I'll be at. Um, and, and pretty much that's it. But I do want to say one last thing before we get out of here about Darion. The, the coolest thing about Darion is seeing the process is the process. And uh, Mr. Coleman had a plan for his life. And, and, you know, we always talk about that for our kids. And I have a son right now who's two years old, and I'm starting to, I would say, not map out his plan, but I, I'm starting to see the progression in, in helping him obviously throw a football even at two years old i mean if you see some videos i mean it's kind of insane what this kid's doing already but it's it's almost like me here i have a plan but it's really cool to be in the front row seat of darion coleman's plan that mr coleman i put together for him and i'm gonna be honest with you it, it was not easy and there was times where you know people would butt heads with him and, and kind of call him crazy for what he's doing and traveling this place and that place and going here and there. And it's, it's, I mean, I'm going to, I've been there. I was the front row seat to all that and just watching that. And, you know, he always said, I'm, I'm sticking to the plan and whether you like it or not, you know, it's going to come to fruition one day and we're, it's all going to make sense. And so now sitting here talking to you on this day is like, wow, it's all making sense. It's all coming together to this whole plan that was always envisioned at 10 years old with the people that he's placed in his life, the media outlets that we did. I mean, it was to the point where it's so detailed to where he picked out his outfits for my workouts because <laughs> it, was, it was always about marketing this kid to put him on the biggest platform. I'm telling you, it's, it was, it's always been about this plan. And so I've kind of joined this process and enjoyed it. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to see where this thing goes. But like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm excited for it. Cause I'm like, this is all about my area. Cause I love marketing and I love, you know, getting kids out there and promoting kids. And I mean, he was already on that platform and that, and that mindset. So when he merged with me on that idea and I'm like, Oh my goodness, like it actually works. And within a year, he's already on news, news outlets. He's in big time articles. There's people reaching out to do stories on him when he was in sixth, seventh grade, because he's throwing 43 touchdowns as a 11, 12 year old. So, I mean, it was always like these things, Things was a part of this crazy plan that people told him there's no way this is happening you're crazy for doing this you're crazy for making your kid play varsity as an eighth grader you're crazy for going to orlando you're crazy for even probably training with me for a while like i mean there's so many things that they're probably like you're crazy for doing but he stuck to the plan and regardless of you know you're with him at one point or another like it was always going to be a part of this plan for darion and at the end of the day he always put darion first and always knew that God had a gift for him, so he was going to do everything he could to make sure that he had every opportunity to live out this, this God-given gift that he saw early. And now we're sitting here, like I said, I mean, I call him on a regular basis, and the first thing I ask him is, do you realize that your son's committed to my thing? Like, it's, it's literally like this whole thing is crazy because it actually works. So, like, if you really – put your time into this plan and you put the right people in your, in your, in your kids' lives, including my son, Darion's going to be a big brother to my son. Like he's going to look up to Darion. We're going to, his first game is going to be with Darion at Miami in a couple weeks against Florida state. Like, so this is much bigger than what Darion can even think, but it's always been a part of this plan that God has for him and in all of our lives. And so again, I played with coach Williams back in 2010, not knowing that 
14 years later, I was going to train a kid that I had at 10. Now he's going to be playing for him, now committed to Miami. So it's always part of this crazy plan that God has in store for him. And so I know without a shadow of a doubt, Darion's going to live out his dream. He's going to be the starting quarterback at Miami. And I'm confidently boldly in saying that. And he's going to be in the NFL. And now hopefully he has a couple national titles and a Heisman Trophy behind his name. But that's going to be obviously, you know, dictating on what Miami does or whatever and what he does. But at the end of the day, the opportunity is going to be there because of this plan that Mr. Coleman has put together. And it has worked perfectly. And I'm just blessed to be a part of that plan in, in a small way. The man with the plan, Mr. Coleman, before we head off, any party worries, <laughs> don't, uh, shout your socials out and, and just kind of do whatever you want to say before we wrap That's it up. That's the guy right there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, he took me back with the outfits. Yeah, I used to go, I used to get, I used to buy the outfits just for the workouts. If you go back and through his Twitter and YouTube, I mean, Instagram, you'll see it that he was always matching and then he got the way I said, take his shirt off. And what I, I always told him that we're going to make the oak trees and the barbershop start talking first. But it got way bigger than that because it was I created an expectation of this kid that they always seen working out to the music, old music, however. And then they could see that, oh, he really can play. Oh, he a baller. And it, it was it was just a uh, strategic plan. And, uh, you know, a lot of that stuff I forgot about Baylor. But I and a lot of people called me crazy for what I was doing and, and the stuff I talked about. But one thing I was always it, it, it always boiled down to Darion. He never folded on me. Now I get out there and I talk up that big Willie talk and he got a training session or he got to compete against some big kids and I done did all that talking. But when he get out that car, he was never the biggest, but he was always the biggest on that field and them big boys. And he had them, a lot of them intimidated for years. And so it was fun. And, you know, I forgot about it a lot of, but it was fun as we were going, but it wasn't playing the whole time. It was a play. In the whole time. I didn't know it was going to work. I didn't fold on him. He didn't fold on me. And Baylor never folded on us. And we sitting here today. So am I crazy? <laughs> nope. I'm going to do the same thing with my son. <laughs> That's awesome to hear. Well, I, I've had yeah. a blast covering Darren over the last you know, few years. I remember when he first got to Miami, I did a story about him being kind of a rising quarterback, you know, looking to get a Miami offer. You know, when I found out he was committed to Miami, you know, I had so much joy writing that story. And I'm looking forward to covering him. You know, until he gets to Miami, you know, when he plays on in Miami. So I really do appreciate, you know, you guys sharing this story, Mr. Coleman. Quick, hey, a quick question for you, though. For sure. I've seen sure. you at a couple spots we was at. I mean, I see you talking to Darion. That kid, when you talking to him off the field, is he that same one when you see him out there competing? Oh, 100%. He, he, off the field, he's got that cool, calm, you know, collective swagger. And then when he's on the field, it's the same thing. Him just, you know, having fun, but knowing he, he's got so, the to back it up. What I'm saying is, you don't see that light switch when it switches on when he go into competitive mode other than – and then you talk to him off the field? Oh, for sure. He, he's it's locked. A big difference. Sometimes when I'm even trying to, you know, get a video of him or things like that, he's kind of just like, no, nah, I'm tuned. He won't even look at the camera. He's just tuned in, which is, you know, something you always love to see in athletes and things like that. But, you know, I like I said, he he's – to me, he, he's the same way, but he does have that switch. When he's ready to go, he's definitely that, ready to That's the plan. Down. That's the plan right there. And that's the answer yeah, I was waiting on. All business. That's it. That's all you got to know. But if you want to know Darion's personality, it's business. And if it, and if ain't and if it ain't gonna benefit him business wise, whether it's on the field, off the field, trust me, he ain't gonna want no parts of it. You and if people yeah. found that out real quick. You ain't gonna be in his circle much long. If, if it ain't about the plan, Darion, you know he's he's all this. Hey, I'm I got a goal, and either you you gonna follow my goal or we just gonna move on. And that's what he does. And it's it's Darion's a different different breed, but. That, that 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 field is different now too, so it's 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 special and it works together. Like they say, you know, it, it takes a village to build, you know, people up around, and it seems like Darian has a great village and y'all going supporting him and things like that, man, for sure. That is. All right, thank you for having me on, man. Of course, I appreciate you guys and everyone at home tuning in, watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. For Balen Trujillo, for Mr. Coleman, I'm Azuki Charles. Thank you all for watching, and you know, have a great rest of your day now. Thanks.